Executives from YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat testified in the Senate this morning about what their platforms are doing to protect younger users. The hearing comes after a former Facebook data scientist testified about what she says are Instagram's harmful effects on some teens. Skylar Henry has the latest from Washington. In a Senate Commerce Subcommittee hearing, Utah Senator Mike Lee challenged Snapchat executive Jennifer Stout. His staff created an account for a 15-year-old with no preferences and says what showed up on the social media app was wildly inappropriate for a child. Tips on, quote, why you shouldn't go to bars alone, notices for video games that are rated for ages 17 and up, and articles about porn stars. I am unfamiliar and I've taken notes about what you have said that your account surfaced. Stout joined executives from YouTube and TikTok, answering questions about how their apps are looking out for children on issues from privacy to safety. He was suffering from dental pain. Senator Amy Klobuchar shared the story of 19-year-old Devin Noring of Minnesota, who died after taking fentanyl-laced Percocet that he bought on Snapchat. We have deployed proactive detection measures to get in ahead of what the drug dealers are doing. They are constantly evading our tactics. I think there's other ways to do this too as creating uh, liability when this happens so maybe that'll make you work even faster so we don't uh, lose another kid. Earlier this month one Facebook whistleblower told lawmakers the company prioritized profit over user safety even going as far as generating algorithms potentially exposing children to dangerous content. Francis Haugen, the former Facebook employee who sounded the alarm, testified before a UK Parliament Joint Committee Monday. Facebook's own research says now the bullying follows children home. It goes into their bedrooms. Lawmakers also expressed concerns that TikTok is tied to China's communist government. Allegations the app's parent company, ByteDance, denies. If it were not accurate, you would answer the questions, and you have dodged the questions more than any witness I have seen in my nine years serving in the Senate. The company says it stores all of TikTok's U.S. data in the United States and has recently tightened its privacy practices for children. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Let's bring in CBS News technology and politics reporter Musadiq Bidar. Hi there, Moose. So this is the second time this month that social media companies have been questioned about child safety on their platforms. Is anyone proposing any sort of solution? Uh, Elaine, there are a number of proposals floating around. Uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar, Senator Blumenthal, and Senator Ed Markey all have uh, various proposals that look to increase transparency of these uh, platforms and give extra data pr privacy protection, especially for uh, younger users. None of them uh, have made significant progress yet, but the lawmakers say they are close to moving forward in a bipartisan manner. Uh, it was interesting to hear the questions they were asking today. Lawmakers essentially wanted to know uh, what specific changes these platforms would support. Uh, all three said that they would support a federal ban on advertisement that targets underage users. Uh, they said that they would support getting rid of the like button. Uh, TikTok and Snapchat said that they would uh, welcome external researchers to examine their algorithms, although YouTube was a little iffy about that. Uh, so the lawmakers are, uh, have now had a chance to hear from Facebook, from Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok and Snapchat, uh, it was interesting because uh, this was the first time we had an executive from TikTok uh, and Snapchat testify publicly. Uh, so the lawmakers have a little bit of a better idea of what these companies will support and what they won't. Uh, and they say that they're going to move aggressively forward uh, towards legislation that we're, we're waiting to see. Well, Senator Cruz got into a heated exchange with a TikTok executive over China's role in the company. Here's part of what was said. Is Beijing ByteDance Technology a, quote, other affiliate of your corporate group as your own privacy policy defines it? Senator, I'm just, I'm just trying to be clear to answer your question. That entity is based for, in China for the Chinese business that is not affiliated or connected with TikTok. Okay. All right, so Musidi, can you explain the concerns that Senator Cruz had here? So TikTok's privacy policy states that the company can share user data with its affiliates, with its uh, parent companies, and anyone that it considers a part of its corporate group. Uh, China uh, 
the Chinese Communist Party has a stake in ByteDance. Uh, ByteDance, of course, is uh, TikTok's parent company. But if we can get a little deeper into the weeds here, uh, ByteDance also has its own subsidiaries. And one of those subsidiaries, uh, the Chinese Communist Party recently uh, got a stake in. They have a board seat on that company. Uh, and so what Senator Cruz was trying to clarify uh, was whether TikTok is willing to share U.S. user data uh, with this ByteDance subsidiary, ByteDance uh, Beijing Technology. And if so, that means that the Chinese Communist Party can potentially access uh, U.S. user data from TikTok. And that is uh, extremely concerning for lawmakers. Senator Cruz brought that up. Senator Marsha Blackburn brought that up as well. Uh, and as you saw there, there was uh, a heated exchange whether or not uh, that is the case. Uh, now, Beckerman said that uh, ByteDance has access to that data, but it's unclear if ByteDance's subsidiaries uh, also will be able to access that data. And that's something that uh, he was not willing to, to fully answer. Okay, certainly we'll be looking to hear more about that. Um, but let's turn to Facebook, which has also come under scrutiny from lawmakers for the impact it has on kids. How do you think today's hearing impacts Facebook? Yeah, well, Facebook has uh, answered a number of questions. Their executive, Antigone Davis, testified before the same subcommittee uh, earlier, uh, uh, excuse me, last month. And Senator Richard Blumenthal, the chair of this committee, has asked Mark Zuckerberg to come testify. Uh, but let's remember what Zuckerberg said yesterday in the investors' call. Uh, he told all of Facebook's investors that in the future, the company is going to focus on young adults even more. Uh, this comes as uh, the company put a pause on creating Instagram for kids, and lawmakers are asking uh, the company to answer tough questions. So uh, while you have lawmakers asking Facebook for answers on how its products impact kids, and at the same time, you have Facebook saying that uh, the future of the company is going to be young adults. Uh, Zuckerberg said they're going to be, quote, our North Star. Uh, so in the next few years, they're going to focus specifically on catering their products to young adults. Uh, and they said that that could potentially mean they're going to lose engagement and time from some of the older users. But uh, that's the demographic that they're going to continue to focus on. Interesting. Well, we are expecting to hear from Mark Zuckerberg publicly on Thursday. Any insight on what he'll talk about? That's right. He is going to talk about the metaverse. This is something that Facebook has been pushing for a long time. Zuckerberg says that uh, he wants Facebook to transition from a social media company to a virtual reality company. And that opens a whole uh, list of other questions uh, as far as safety and privacy protections go. Uh, yesterday on the investors call, Zuckerberg said that uh, in the next 10 years, he wants a billion people on the metaverse. He wants a billion people using virtual reality, shopping uh, in, through virtual reality, uh, wearing these goggles and glasses and interacting with colleagues, classmates, and friends that way. Uh, and we're going to hear him talk a lot more about that on Thursday. Uh, but that conversation is going to open a whole list of new questions about uh, how lawmakers are going to have to regulate this company. Right. Once again, it's just an example of the technology progressing at such an incredible rate. We'll see what that response from lawmakers is. Musadiq Bidar, always good to have you, Moose. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine.